welcome to part two of subcutaneous fluid um, administration. This is Enzo. He's our star today. He's uh, one of our vet tech students' cats, and uh, he's super friendly, but he is a little wiggly, so we figured he's a great example um, to use in our video, because most of your cats probably aren't just going to sit there like statues. They're probably going to try to get away. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm giving him treats, just so he is not, you know, fearful of what we're going to do. There you go, and while he's enjoying his treats, I'm going to show you. Um, we're going to go ahead and put his fluids under his skin uh, between his shoulder blades, and that's really the most common um, spot for cats and dogs. They have a lot of space under their skin, so you want to pull it up like a tent. That's what's important, okay? And you want to go ahead and put a, put a needle, we're going to do it in a second, um, at the base of that tent, okay? There are two things that can happen. Is you can go through the other side of the tent, okay, right here, and you're going to have some leakage. If that happens, you just close your clamp, pull out, and you're going to start over. It's really not that bad. It's just messy. So, you know, you kind of, you know, it's something that happens even to us sometimes. So, you know, just don't panic. Your cats can tell when you're getting stressed or your dogs. Um, so, you know, just, you know, calm down and just do it, you know, do it again. The other thing that can happen is you can go a little too steep. And what, what you know, the needle is long. So if your tent is not high enough and you go a little too steep, okay, you can hit their muscles tissue and that that hurts okay and also it's not gonna allow the fluids to to flow really nicely so you know you're gonna sit there for a long time to get those fluids in so once your needle is in the tent you want to be able to to have a nice free flow of fluids you're gonna look at your drip chamber which is gonna tell you okay yeah we're in business right so you should have a nice steady flow if it's drip 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 really slow, you know something is wrong, okay? Then you want to maybe redirect your needle a little bit and it should go a little faster or just start over, okay? Um, that's pretty much, those are the two most common things that happen, so, um, okay, all right. Sometimes when you have a little leakage, you'll see a little little blood tinge fluid too, and that's just, you know, could be some skin bleeders, you know, as you pulled out your needle, don't panic, you know? Of course, it shouldn't happen every time, but again, you know, it, it can happen once or twice. You just take some paper towel and just kind of blot it dry and you should be okay. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and give them some fluids. Now, um, if you're wondering how much you need to give, that's gonna be very specific for, for your cat or your dog. Um, the doctor is gonna prescribe a certain amount and frequency as well. Now, the most bags that we're gonna give you is gonna be 1,000 ml, so one liter. And uh, you can see, <laughs> You'll, you'll, have, um, you'll have numbers on here. Now, between those lines, that's 100 mLs. And you know, a lot of cats, they get 100 or 200 mLs or 150 um, per day or every other day, and that's what you're looking for. You're basically gonna go down you know, per line, okay? <laughs> All right, you ready? Here we go, here's some treats, here we go. I don't think he's getting dinner tonight. Okay, so when you're ready to start, you want to take off your, your cap, make sure that needle stays nice, nice and clean because it is the end of your line. And you're going to pull up, you're going to pull up the skin like a tent, and you're going to go through the skin. That's the part that most cats feel a little bit, okay? So you don't want to do, you want to be quick about it. You want to get through the skin. Now, right away, I'm going to go ahead and just keep my hand on here while he's being silly and go ahead and look at your drip chamber. That's what we're looking for, okay? You can see it's flowing really nicely, and I don't have any, any leakage around, okay? So that means it's in the right place. Now, let's say you're going for 100 ml, so you're gonna sit here until those, you know, until that fluid line up there is you know, almost down to the two, okay? So we're going for 100 ml. Um, and what you can see, there's going to be a bubble forming, which is normal, and uh, there shouldn't be any leakage around. So once you're done, you're going to go ahead and close your line first, and then you're going to gently pull out your needle, okay? You're going to um, go ahead and recap it, and you're going to set it down on a clean surface, okay? That's important. And usually I just pinch their skin a little bit, not to, you know, not you know, to the point where it hurts, but just to help, um, you know, close that hole that we just created, right? We don't want a lot of leakage afterwards. If there is some leakage after you're done with the fluids, completely okay. You know, it's, it shouldn't be more than just a couple drops, um, and it really should resolve fairly quickly. 
So that's what you're looking for. And see, he didn't really care at all. In fact, I think he really likes the attention. So make sure you use lots of positive, you know, like positive reinforcement, lots of treats, and uh, make it a fun experience. I hope this helped you guys. Let us know if you have any questions. We will always go through this with you guys one on one as often as you want to. And uh, we have handouts to help you too. All right. Thank you for watching.